Methamphetamine is ravaging Fiji. Communities are fractured as locals battle addiction. From the island nation's small villages to its police force, it's feared the epidemic is threatening societal collapse. The police minister warns it's creating a nation of zombies and health authorities are desperate for help. Just last week, a United Nations official flew in to address an alarming rise in meth fueled HIV cases. Recent raids in Nandi netted around five tonnes of meth bound for our shores and Australia. In the first of a four-part investigation, Pacific correspondent Barbara Drever reveals the extent of Fiji's crisis. Fiji is awash with meth. You've seen a lot. How widespread is it now? It's very bad. Like, very, very, very bad. We'll call him Vili, a drug user and supplier who's done jail time. He was closely associated with the Ramans. Talat Raman is now in a New Zealand prison for importing meth from Mexico for the Comancheros. Son Joshua is serving 20 years behind bars in Suva for possession of nearly 40 kilos of cocaine. I influence a lot and a lot of people to use it. Earlier this year, nearly five tonnes of meth worth $1.6 billion was found in two houses in Nandi. The size of the seizure, to put this in perspective, is enough to feed the Australian market for one year. While 13 people have been arrested, the stakes are so high, fear remains. People living around the drug houses are too scared to speak to us on camera because after they gave interviews to the local media, a group of men turned up in a car trying to intimidate them and threats were made. Most of the haul which originated in Mexico was destined for New Zealand and Australia, but some was for the local market. One news knows of four recooked labs on Vanua Levu and Viti Levu. This is where the crystal meth has other ingredients added to it to make it cheaper for the local market. They bring the, the yachts from Tonga to Onui Lau and Matuku, that is in the uh, Lau Archipelago. They seal wrap it so that it's waterproof and they put like mats and they put like the, the boys and they put GPS and they put in the sea. These are some of the places other meth arrests have been made this year, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's clear things are bad, but how bad? It's everywhere. Not only is it killing the youth, it's killing our children too. If we did not solve this drug problem in Fiji soon, our nation is going to be a nation of zombies. There's no drug rehabilitation program in Fiji. The Women's Crisis Centre is at the front line of desperation. I feel that it, it's very every household, yeah. Because most, most of our communities, we live in an extended family, yeah. It's happening in the villages, it's happening in the schools, even children are using it. Village structures are falling apart. Meth is a new norm, even amongst Fiji's youngest. Children have been used as mules to sell drugs in school or to their friends outside school. I know, and I've heard also, which is even worse, where some parents have actually uh, given drugs to their children to go and sell in school. That is very alarming for us as a military. Uh, when we view it from the lenses of national security, uh, it is very concerning. Those on the street tell us buying meth is as easy as buying a curry. It just costs more. I'm quarter bag, it's $150 Fijian. And a half bag is like um, 250 to 350 Fijian dollars. But as I'm saying, it depends on the grade. That's the thing that people in Fiji are doing. They sell drugs to buy drugs. So they consume, 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 and then they'll sell a few so that they can get a reload. People are selling everything they own, stealing from family and friends, and there's the violence. There has been some deaths the uh, last year and this year. Right. I think two overdose, um, overdose um, um, cases and I think three or four um, um, four murders. Some murders? Yes. Um, there was a girl that was stabbed. The future of Fiji is, it's very, I can say, bleak. There's a lot on the line for Fiji's next generation. Okay, Bab, this is really confronting and quite concerning. 
How did things get to this point? Well, basically, for years, there were people in power who let it happen um, or were heavily compromised. For a Mexican cartel who wants to get their meth to New Zealand and Australia because we are big consumers and happy to pay for it, then what better than to get a nation hooked? Because then you can count on people at all level of society to help. So Fiji is no longer just a transshipment hub. Fiji is now a long-term storage container, regularly feeding New Zealand and Australia. I was talking to Jose Sousa Santos, who's a transnational crime specialist, and he says this is a whole new ball game. He's never seen anything like it. That five tonnes of meth, there were no security guards. There, it wasn't a safe house. It was just there, which shows how confident the Mexican cartel was in their setup there. This is a first of four in your series. Mm. What else did your investigation uncover? Um, corruption, 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 police involvement, um, children being addicted, the impact on villages, an HIV crisis. I mean, it, it's actually so heartbreaking, Melissa. Um, I've been going to Fiji for years and I've never seen anything like it. And it actually, uh, yeah, there are good people in Fiji. And what I would say is that for anyone who's concerned about going on holiday there, the resorts look after you. There are many good people in Fiji who will always look after their guests. So don't worry about that. But um, there's no denying that Fiji is an on its knees. All right, and you have more uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Pacific correspondent Barbara Dreven, Nana Hinui, thank you very much.